Hello everybody and Happy New Year. Today is the 1st of January 2018 and I'm feeling really excited about continuing the writing of my post-Brexit espionage thriller this year. Back in September I introduced some things about this new book and I promised then that I would be sharing some information about how I prepared to do the writing by laying out a structure for the story, for plotting it, for creating the characters and uh, also to talk about some of the tools that I used during the writing. That's what I'd like to do today, so here we go. Okay, so how did I actually go about planning for and preparing and then beginning the writing of this post-Brexit espionage thriller? Well, like many writers, uh, I use notebooks and journals constantly to capture ideas and thoughts and feelings and observations, and over time, uh, enough of those ideas have gone into those books that the kernel for this story was forming in my mind. And at that point, I really wanted to make sure that I had properly thought out the story that I wanted to tell. And the reason for that is when I wrote my first book, An End of Beginnings, I didn't really focus enough on that planning and preparation. And then what I found later on during the writing was that there were um, problems with the plot or things were in the wrong sequence and I spent a lot of time either having to rewrite sections or swap things around. I was also doing the writing at, the, at that time for that book in Word and it was complicated and time consuming and it was a, just a distraction actually from the proper writing of that book. I learnt a lot of different ways of writing from doing that first book. So by the time I was writing number two, Dead Snow, um, the overall process was more efficient because I spent more time preparing up front. I still made mistakes, I still had to rework some things, but overall it was a better experience and I was still at that time writing in Word. Now when I'm beginning the writing of this new book, the post-Brexit espionage thriller that still currently doesn't have a title, uh, I put a lot of effort uh, into the planning and preparation up front because I don't want this time to have to waste time correcting plot holes or moving things around. So my first um, point of preparation for this book was to jump into this program which is called Free Mind. It's a mind mapper and uh, it's open source. Uh, freely available on the internet and you can see here that it was in April of this year that I was planning this book and the central idea is um, that it's a conspiracy thriller beginning in 2024 five years after Brexit. There are lots of thought nodes hanging off this central idea I've zoomed in on one of them for you and one of the um, underlying factors for the book is the presumption that the European Union was overall economically hostile during the Brexit negotiations and that as a consequence of that the UK economy is now in a profound recession and I've actually modelled the effect of this on the US Great Depression of 31-32 that Scotland is continuing to press the UK government for independence but the Gibraltar and the Falkland Islands are pressing to remain part of the UK. Um, consequence of, the, of this action by Gibraltar and the Falklands is more pressure from Spain and Argentina to control those territories and Russia is taking the advantage of all of this churn to begin very active and aggressive patrolling of UK territory. There are other nodes in this diagram. I'll just zoom out a bit so that you can see them. It all seems a bit, bit wordy, and it is, but the advantage of using free mind is once you've collected your overall thoughts in that kind of way, uh, you can then export this into a rich text document. And I did do that. I played with this overall idea for a while and then ended up ended up bringing those ideas into Excel. Uh, you can do this of course you know, in any software that you might use or any spreadsheet, it doesn't have to be Excel, um, just it's convenient to me. And what's coming here is some initial thoughts about who the characters are going to be, but more significantly um, the chapters, the scenes, 
what point of view the scene is, what action is happening, where it's happening, and what the characters are who are needed. And the beauty of doing this, of course, in a spreadsheet is you can change it really quickly. You can move things around, you can change the order, you can do a global find and replace if, if that's what you need to do. This planning in Excel started to also give me ideas for who the characters were. There, there are no um, particular names here, it's more about roles, but for protagonists and antagonists or the supporting cast, who are they? I thought I was going to need to define uh, 13 principal characters, actually just ended up being 10. And when I'm mapping out characters, I like to use this character sheet. It's from Rebecca Sinclair, you can find it on eclectics.com, and it's the fiction writer's character chart. Th completing this character chart forces you to consider uh, all of your principal characters' drives, their motivations, their skills, what they're not skilled at, their preferences, what they look like, uh, nicknames, all those sorts of things. So he, this is the example. It's Peter Carson. He's the lead character for the Prime Minister's Special Investigations Group, which is kind of like a black ops military group, completely fictional and made up for this story. The beauty of defining this for Peter Carson is, for example, favourite literature. If I needed to know that during the writing of the story, I wouldn't have to stop the writing and work it out. I've already done the thinking. He likes Agatha Christie stories. If I wanted to know what he would like to eat, it's cod and asparagus. If I want to know what his hobbies are, he likes to do Sudoku puzzles. I actually also know that his nickname is R, um, and that he has a, a DSO with bar and military cross medals as examples. So very helpful to complete this up front for your main characters. I then reached the point in the planning and preparation where I had an overall structure for what the story was going to look like in Excel and some ideas of who the characters were going to be. That's when I moved into this software, Why Writer 5? which you can also find uh, on the internet. And the beauty of Why Writer 5, as compared to Word, is it breaks your story down into the structure of the chapters and the scenes that you're going to write. It's not one long piece of text. Each individual scene is a separate file. So for example, here in chapter one, there are five scenes, and within each scene, uh, we can edit the text, the narrative, individually. So this particular one scene has 1300 words. That's all that you're playing with. In Word, those 1300 words would have been embedded in all of the rest of the text, and that's quite hard to work with. Before I wrote a single word of the actual story, I laid out the chapter and scene structure for this book. And so for the first time, for me, the writing is quite linear from chapter one. I'm currently on chapter six, as you can see. I've got 27 overall chapters, so there's 21 to go. I know I'm 35,000 words in. And uh, chapter six is the one I'm currently working on, The Attack on the Queen. And yesterday when I was writing, I reached this point and I captured some thoughts um, and you know, a quick bit of research for the writing that I'm going to be doing today on that scene. And once I've written the attack on the, on the Queen, which is going to fail, by the way, uh, then of course there are consequences of that, of that action, and they're going to happen here. The beauty of Why Writer 5, other than editing individual scenes, is when your writing is complete, you can then export it all into a single rich text document and can continue either improving the writing, polishing it, um, or indeed formatting it for publication in the software of your choice. For me, that would be Word. You know, for you, it's whatever is your preferred software. Now, you might also wonder what software I'm using today to record this video, and it's a piece, again, open source uh, software called Open Broadcaster.
So that's it for today. I hope you found this insight into how I've planned and prepared and begun the writing of this post-Brexit thriller uh, useful and interesting. And I think next time I'll probably go deeper into one of the particular scenes and give some insights into how I approach the actual writing of, of, uh, of one of the scenes in this book. But that's everything for today. Thanks for now. Bye bye.